Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. Today, we're going to be talking about Hedera Hashgraph or HBAR if you will. Um, but before we jump into this video, I just want to ask everybody, how is your day going? Uh, today, it has been raining all day long. I was actually trying to attempt to live stream earlier, but the weather was just not having it. I guess there is a lot of internet issues happening around my um, area so it is what it is but nonetheless we are back in the content game with Hedera Hashgraph so today we're going to be talking about some updates in regards to HBAR um, you know Visa and stuff like that all that kind of stuff and we're also going to address the idea on is HBAR going to move this bull run because I think that that is a main concern that a lot of people have um, ever since I posted a tweet yesterday and I got a lot of comments asking me well, do you think that HBAR is going to move this this year due to this? So with that being said, let's actually just jump into it and let's actually address what is going on with HBAR. So first and foremost, we are going to be talking about um, this tweet that I posted yesterday saying utility assets are extremely early. No, we won't have a utility run this year, but we could be seeing one in fall of 2022 and moving forward. The true utility hasn't started hbar will be a front runner uh though as it is the most utilized dlt currently now a lot of people are continuing to say do you think that you know we're going to have a, a utility run this year do you think that you know hbar is going to move so forth like i i have this you know individual saying this tweet concerns me also so hbar is not moving this year uh just to answer that question um to be completely honest with you, yeah, HBAR will move this year. Um, you know, it already has moved significantly, but we are targeting the all-time high very soon. Um, HBAR is going to have its own run. Um, I think that it's going to pretty much perform as well as XRP did back in 2017 and 2018 and do you know, pretty much maybe a 60K percent run from its lowest price point. That will pretty much put it around that $10 mark. Also, I do think that it could hit the highs of possibly $15. I've talked about it multiple times on this channel. We could actually address that um, maybe in a video some sometime tomorrow or something like that, uh, where we do talk about HBAR possibly hitting $10 to $15 and the likeliness of that as well. But yes, HBAR will move this year. It's not going to just sit stable at these you know prices. I do think that it's going to have a massive bull run as well. So just to quickly address that pinpoint, yes, HBAR will move. No, it is not going to have to wait until 2022 plus. I just think that 2022 plus the utility run is going to be absolutely massive. So I hope that answered a lot of those questions in regards to that. So with that being said, let's jump on to some other things. So first and foremost, I do want to talk about NFTs. So we have been seeing NFTs growing in an absolute massive way. We do see our NFT sales volume reported by OpenSea. 2019, $8 million. 2020, $24 million. 2021, $4 billion. And $3 billion of that came in the month of August alone. Guys, NFTs are no joke. And with Hedera Hashgraph basically launching their own NFT marketplace using NFT.com, um, that is going to be absolutely crazy. This is going to be built on um, Hedera Hashgraph. I am very excited for this. I think that this is actually going to be insane. I think that NFT.com, having that overall URL is going to be, you know, huge alone because we already know that, you know, when you're looking for NFTs, who knows really what OpenSea is, who knows what Rarible is, you know, but if you know what NFT.com is, you know what NFTs are. So um, I do think that that is actually really good for um, Hedera Hashgraph. And also, you know, the transactional volume of this, you know, $4 billion dollars in just you know three billion in just one month uh, resulting into a four billion dollar overall revenue you know process that is actually crazy if you think about it especially long term and not only that but this is all on ethereum so just imagine how many fees could have been saved think about the scalability that hedera has compared to hbar and stuff so you know i think realistically speaking you know we could do these numbers easily um, even in a shorter amount of time. Now, I do want to talk about uh, this tweet here. So 
We do see here HBAR has some serious partnership coming up with MasterCard buy and hold HBAR in spot or long. Um, and I don't think that this is so much um, a partnership with MasterCard, but I will say this. I do think that a partnership with MasterCard could be on its way or maybe possibly MasterCard joining the governing council as a GC member. So I think that that could be really cool to see. Um, but this is all going back to that GK8 security tweet that I already made a video on. Now, the reason why I'm going to be talking about this again is because I didn't make a video in regards to MasterCard. Now, in regards to MasterCard and Visa and all these other payment processing, you know, companies, um, I think that they could benefit greatly from being on a DLT. But the interesting thing about MasterCard and HBAR is even if we go back in time, so I actually made a video back in April regarding DLTs and uh, Visa and also MasterCard. And we actually see here, right? Rumor floating around that HBAR are about to partner with MasterCard. MasterCard are looking for a cryptocurrency that is ABFT compliant to solve their sales day problem. HBAR is the only coin on the market that is ABFT compliant. The sales day problem for MasterCard is that a few years ago on Black Friday, MasterCard crashed because it could not handle the amount of transactions needed for the amount of purchases going through. And I've actually mentioned this multiple times on this channel. If you guys are aware of that, I have said that multiple times that Visa and MasterCard basically went down at some point in time during black friday that's right visa and mastercard i know that they are rivals of each other but they did both go down at some point in time they crashed and they were not able to handle the transactional volume um, or the scalability factor i would we do see here they could only handle 57,000 transactions um, it has unofficially been reported that HBAR has been working with MasterCard to try and solve this problem and have enabled them to make 100,000 transactions per second. This is huge. It's all a rumor right now, but this is genuine that MasterCard are searching for ABFT compliant crypto to solve the problem. HBAR is the only coin that fits the criteria. Now, obviously, this is all speculation. This is all kind of, you know, rumors, if you will. But I do think that MasterCard and or Visa does have a high probability of working with HBAR in the future. Definitely. There's no doubt about it. Now, in regards to this, we also see, you know, you know, MasterCard has been trying to adopt crypto for a very long time. This is actually coming from MasterCard.com themselves. Now, this goes back to February 10th. Now, this is them talking about, you know, Bitcoin. Uh, they're talking about, you know, how it was surging in value at this time because this is February, of course. Now, Obviously, they want to adopt crypto. They already know. Uh, we even see here, we are here to enable customers, merchants, and businesses to move uh, digital value, traditional or crypto, however they want. It should be your choice. It's your money. Um, overall, I think that, you know, them pretty much allowing crypto to move over their network freely. I think that that's great. But also, we do see here. MasterCard is actively engaging with several major central banks around the world as they review plans to launch new digital currencies dubbed CBDCs to offer their citizens a new way to pay. Last year, we uh, recreated a test platform for these banks to use the currencies in a simulated environment. Using our deep experience in payments technologies, we look forward to continuing these partnerships with governments and helping them explore the best ways to develop these new currencies. Now, the interesting thing about this, right? is that MasterCard has to be aware of Hedera Hashgraph. And the only reason why I say that is, is if they're running these tests on CBDCs around the world, they would have to be running a test in the United States as well, um, possibly with you know stress tests, whatever the case may be for payments. And the thing about the US, right, is that we do see here the central bank digital uh, cash and also currencies overall. Um, and this is all for you know pretty much the US, right? This goes into Project New Dawn, um, basically working with the Fed. Um, but we do see here, uh, they're talking about cash tokenized and all this stuff. I actually talked about this in today's live stream. Now, in regards to this, right? So. I really want to go over to let's go to the home um, and I actually want to just go over why Hedera Hashgraph is working with them. So we do see down here, we do see that the US Federal Reserve is working on Project New Dawn. I already did a video on this, but we also see Hedera Hashgraph here and IBM as one of the leading GC members on Hedera Hashgraph. Now, in regards to Project New Dawn, if we click down here, it will open all this info. Uh, we, uh, we don't really care about all that stuff. Um, I'm so I'm more so involved in the in collaboration with Hedera Hashgraph and Microsoft. So even in, in the case that, you know, hey, if MasterCard is running these stress tests, if they're working with, you know, CBDCs, they would obviously have to know Hedera Hashgraph's name because HBAR is working with MTech on a CBDC 
with the Fed. It has already been, um, you know, pretty much already stated in this white paper here as well. Um, and we could actually let this load. And then I'm actually going to just hit Control F. And then we're going to go to Hedera. So down here, we do see that Hedera will basically be used as the trust layer for CBDC networks or the private CBDC networks for interoperability with other CBDCs around the world. Um, we do see that Hedera Hashgraph is mentioned multiple times in here. That they, they even give you the rundown. Um, and of course, Hedera Hashgraph is mentioned as a partner with this with Microsoft as well. So, I mean, they could be, you could pretty much say that, hey, Hedera is already working with Microsoft at some point in time as well. Um, but not only that, but if they are working with MTech and the Fed on a CBDC, then we obviously could say that, hey, at some point in time, uh, you know, MasterCard knew about Hedera Hashgraph. They know what they are capable of doing and why wouldn't they innovate with them? Now, you might be wondering, well, what do DLTs or distributed ledger technologies offer these payment you know, companies? For an example, we do see here, uh, the share of cross-border revenues for Visa has increased from 23% in 2008 to 28% in 2018. Now we also see the similar trend with MasterCard and they are growing um, at an astronomical rate. Now again, this all goes into the hand of you know one transactional fees Plus, also, you know, we got to remember that Visa and MasterCard run on a pre-approval basis for transactions, meaning all the payments are pre-approved. They are not settled at a real-time basis. With a DLT, they could pretty much transact on a real-time basis and settle those transactions in three to five seconds, for an example, on Hedera Hashgraph. Now, we do see XRP actually mentioned here, um, which is very interesting to see, but we do see here to things in perspective, a standard transaction on the Ripple network costs about a fraction of a penny um, while getting the necessary regulatory approvals and then realizing such a low cost at an industry-wide level seems far-fetched for now. An early adoption of DLT could bring significant upside for Visa and MasterCard in the growing cross-border space by both increasing revenues and reducing costs. So why wouldn't they? These are big corporations that want to get every single dime for their their buck, right? So, you know, a lot of these big companies are penny pinchers, right? They want to get as much revenue as possible. And if we actually look at the flow chart up here, we do see here the total uh, revenues uh, fared by Visa and MasterCard. And obviously they are gaining a lot more revenue, but they are also losing a lot of money as their revenue cost or basis increases. So the cost to revenue obviously you know, outweighs it. It doesn't outweigh it by a lot, but I'm just saying they are spending a significant amount of revenue um, also to generate that revenue. So adopting a DLT, first off, would make payments a lot faster. They would be able to scale without having outages like this. Not only will they have, you know, the scalability problem, you know, fixed, the cost problem fixed, but also we could see those pre-approved payments finally getting thrown out the window that take three to five days to settle in your bank account and we could have them settled in a three to five second basis and why would they choose any other DLT when they could choose a DLT that is doing 1.6 billion transactions in one fiscal year and also an asset that is at a fraction of a penny three to five second finality one of the greenest technologies out there and also it's ABFT compliant and we will have sharding available in quarter four as we do see right here. Why would they choose anybody else? I mean, it's just that simple um, from a scalability factor, from an overall utility factor as well, efficiency factor, all of it goes hand in hand with the idea that Hedera Hashgraph is outscaling every other DLT in this space and it's very cheap still at about 26 cents it hasn't even ran fully yet sitting at a 2.5 billion dollar market cap it is severely undervalued and i do think that it is one of the best choices for mastercard or visa to build with and with that being said i hope that you all enjoyed this video if you guys did definitely leave a like subscribe turn notifications on if you guys don't want free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord down in the description below i hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world this has been nick peace out guys